Well, hello, Blender fans. I hope you're comfortable, because today we're going to be using geometry nodes. Um, we're going to be using them to make a large LED panel, like the type you might find in a stadium. Um, we're going to be modeling the, the individual pixels, in fact, even the individual sub-pixels within the display. Uh, and it creates a really nice effect when the, when the camera is quite close to it. Um, but yeah, in terms of lessons that you'll learn, we're going to be looking at index values and what you can do with them, what they are. Um, and we're going to be looking at how to take data from geometry nodes and use it elsewhere, in our case, in a shader. Um, it should be a lot of fun, so what do you say we get started? Hmm. Okay, so we need a place to start from, and what better place than a plane? So, with that added, let's set our dimensions. Um, we want to bear in mind that we're making a screen, so it needs to be a certain ratio. Uh, I'm going to go with 16 by 9. So let's go for 8 meters by 4.5. And I'll also apply the scale so we don't run into issues later. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode and just rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis so it's facing front. Next we can jump over to geometry nodes, hit new, and give it a name, LED screen. And the first node that we're going to add in is going to be a grid, which I'm going to place there. And I'm also going to add in a join geometry node, like so, because I want to see both the grid and, at least for now, our original plane. Then I'm going to jump over to wireframe mode so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> and yeah, let's configure the grid to, to match our, our plane. So... It's going to be 8 meters by 4.5, and we need to rotate it. So we're going to bring in a transform node, and we'll just rotate that along the x-axis like we did the other one. Perfect. Now our grid matches our plane. Now, you, if you're wondering why are we making sure that we've got this plane in the background, because I'm actually going to disconnect the plane now and not even use it. However, later on in the material, we're going to be borrowing the UV map. From that original geometry so it, it it all needs to to match up okay so on the grid the amount of vertices will essentially be our resolution um so you could go for something like uh, 1280 by 720 problem is once we start adding in all of the pixels that's going to be a little bit excessive and honestly if you if you're looking for a uh, a more high definition display i'd recommend doing uh, i'd recommend a completely different workflow uh, just doing it via a shader um so we're actually going to go a lot less than that so let's divide that by four we divide that by four so 320 by 180 yeah that should be okay okay i've just reorganized my uh, working space a little bit here to make it a bit easier to see on recording but yeah, the next stage is we want to replace each of these vertices points of the grid with three subpixels, an R, G, and a B subpixel, which forms a single pixel. Yeah. So let's let's model one of those little subpixels. And to do that, I'm just going to use a plane and shrink it down and rotate it and get it to roughly the sort of size we need. Cool. Now, the reason I'm using a plane is for performance. You could you could go as detailed as you want with this pixel, make it any shape you want, even the, go as far as the casing and the glass that, the, uh, or not the glass, but the kind of outside of the LED. Um, but yeah, for performance reasons, I'm just making it a square, because unless you're getting literally pixel close, you're not going to be able to tell the difference anyway. So let's call that object a pixel, like so. Um, let's just name this as display. I'm also going to hit this little pin icon because I don't want the node graph to disappear if I happen to click away from the object. And we can hide the pixel for now, but what I will do is grab it and drag it into our geometry nodes. So now we can reference it um, as needed. Awesome. Okay, so as I mentioned, we want um, three sub-pixels per one of these, whatever you want to call them, these vertice points within the grid. So to do that, I'm going to get a mesh primitive, where have you gone? A mesh mesh circle. There we go. And I'm going to set that to three vertices. And um, yeah, let's 
bring over this and take a look at what that looks like. So now we have this giant uh, triangle, because it's just three vertices forming a circle. Um, but if I were to join that geometry with what we have here, we'll also be able to see our grid. And now we can borrow this transform node that we used earlier, duplicate it, no, not the grid, duplicate the transform node, drop that in there, and now we can manipulate our, our little triangle. So what I'm going to do, it's already rotated by 90 degrees because we copied the transform, but if I lower that down there, better set the scale to 0 0.007, because I think if memory serves me, that should be about right. Yeah. So this isn't going to actually be displayed. We're just going to use these three points to generate our subpixels. Yeah. Cool. Let's create a little bit of room then. And then we'll add in a instance on points node, like so. And the points... Oh, I'm feeding things all over the place now. Just get rid of you for a second. So the points are going to be those three... Uh, vertices coming from the circle and the instance the thing that's going to get copied to those points is our pixel object so let's feed that in there and voila we have our our sub pixels awesome so now we basically want to do the same thing again we're going to get another instance on points node connect up our original grid to be the points and the instance will be our bundle our little sub pixel bundle there so let's feed that into the instance, and then feed that into the output, and voila! Every one of those grid points is now three little subpixels. Okay, so we're almost done with our crazy uh, <laughs> geometry nodes wizardry. Um, it's actually not that crazy, it's quite simple, isn't it? But what we're going to do now is two things. First, I'm going to we need to capture an attribute. And if you haven't done that before, get ready for some fun. So let's add in a capture attribute node. But what attribute are we capturing, I hear you ask? Well, it's uh, basically the index value of the subpixels before it gets sent to be put all over the screen. So we just, we, in fact, do you know what's a lot easier? Let's, let's visualize what we're talking about. So. Now we're just looking at the one pixel, which I'm going to have to really zoom in. So there's our one pixel made of three subpixels. Now, if I connect, uh, we need a viewer node, like so, connect that output there, add in an index, like so, plonk that there and feed that in. And if we re... I closed the spreadsheet window, but we actually need it, so give me back. Give me... There we go. So we have the, the spreadsheet, and it's showing what's in our viewer node, or, or what value is plugged into our viewer node. And you'll see that our our three subpixels are given an index value, 0, 1, and 2. And that's awesome, because that means that when we then pass that on to this instance on points node and duplicate that across the whole screen, each subpixel will have... Well, each pixel will have three subpixels with the same index value. One will have zero, one will have one, one will have two. And we can use that to separate out R, G, and B, yeah? Which is what we want to do in the material stage. So we need to grab this data and send it to our material, okay? Bit confusing to uh, to grasp, I know, but it will, it will make sense soon enough. So let's get rid of that viewer node. And we're going to keep the index value, though, and we're going to use this capture attribute node. So let's drop that in there, um, because the, the capture attribute works from a specific point in the node tree. Yeah, so it's it's this point that we were just looking at. This is what we plug the viewer node into. That's where the values are. So that's where the capture attribute node needs to be. And then the value, we'll just plug in the index. Now, we're not looking at points here, we're looking at instances, so we need to change that value to instance, or that option to instance. And there we go. This attribute is now spitting out that index number associated with the the uh, the geometry. So, I'm going to send that right to the group output, and then what we'll do is just jump into uh, here, and we'll just call that index out. 
like so. So we've sent that out. And now if we look at our modifier and go to the uh, output attributes, we see index out. And I'm actually going to type in index out again. Okay. Because this will make it a, uh, a bit of data that we can access elsewhere. Yeah, um, you know, sometimes you might type in like a UV map or um, you might create a vertex group and call it grass and you can reference that. It's the same principle, but you need to give it a name. So we have our index. The final step for the geometry nodes, I don't know if you've noticed, but my viewport is behaving terribly and I have a fairly decent machine. <laughs> and it's because each one of these things is essentially separate objects. Yeah, so that's, well, I'm not going to do the math, but that's a lot, a lot of objects. So we're going to do the geometry nodes equivalent of highlighting them all and pressing Control J to make it a single mesh. And the way you do that in geometry nodes is realize instances. So I'm going to put one there. So each cluster gets turned into a solid mesh. And then I'm going to put one there. So the whole thing gets turned into a single mesh. And now, yay, viewport is performing great. And that is literally the end of the geometry node stage. Okay, so it's time for uh, us to, to look at the material. So for that, we're actually going to need to grab the old pixel again. Uh, where's it gone? There, because I forgot to give it a material. And we'll call that uh, no, LED. And then let's jump over to the shading tab. We can hide that again. We've got our LED up, and I'll just click pin on that. So if we could click away, we still see our LED material. Cool. All right, let's jump into rendered mode. Like so, and I'm also going to turn off the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, overlay, is it? Whatever. The orange stuff. <laughs> but you can still see all our pixels are there and ready for us to do something with. So let's get rid of the principal shader because we don't need that. All we need, in fact, is an emission shader, which I'm going to plug in there. And then I guess we need an image. I probably should have prepared one. So, uh, yeah, give me a sec. Many unbearable hours later. Okay, so some random flowery wallpaper that I found in my uh, images folder. <laughs> um, that will have to do, I guess. Uh, hopefully it's 16 by 9. It is good. So I'm going to feed that into the emission shader. And, um, oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's not working, is it? And I'll tell you why. It's because... We don't have a UV map. It doesn't know what it's doing. So what we're going to do is, as I mentioned way at the start, is borrow the UV from that first plane that we made, the one that we used as a guide to form our grid of vertices. Yeah. So the way to do that is input. Not that, no. It's an input attribute. Sorry, there we go. Uh, geometry is what we want, yep. And here we're just going to type in UV underscore map and then feed that vector into there. And voila, we have our display. Now you will notice because of the way some of our pixels have spilled out, the UV map's a little off. So we can fix that by adding in a vector. Um, Transform node, no. Vector mapping, there we go, vector mapping node. And we can just make small adjustments as needed. So maybe the scale needs to be like 0 0.1.01. And maybe less than that, 0.99. Let's make it slightly bigger and bring it over ever so slightly to the left. I want to make sure it's not spilling over. Uh, yeah, there we go. That just about works. Cool. Starting to get somewhere. So now for the the, the less easy but more fun part. At least that's what I'm going to tell myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that attribute node, duplicate it. But instead of UV map, I'm going to call it index out. So that should be our, this fact value should be the index value that we saw or that we captured within our geometry nodes. 
So if I feed that through a color ramp, like so, we could now set these colors to whatever we want. And to a certain degree, they will impact our emission. You see how some of them are different, but why are they all blue, I hear you ask? Well, remember, the value is between 0 and 2. 0, 1, 2. So what we want to essentially do is we need to get that within the 0 to 1 range. Because at the moment these colours don't make any sense, do they? So let's go to math and we'll just divide by 3. And now we have three different colours for the different uh, pixels, black, red, and kind of a bluey pink color because it's falling about there. But that's easy to fix as well. What we need to do is change this to constant. Okay, and then we can just play around with this until we make sure that we're getting three pixels. And now it's just a matter of changing the colors to what we need them to be. So red for you, green for you and blue for you. Red, green, and blue pixels. Perfect. Now what we want to do is grab a color mix RGB node, set that to multiply, feed in the original image, and then multiply it by this color ramp output, set to 100, feed that into the emission. So we still have the green, red, and blue pixels, but if I zoom out, as if by magic, ta -da, we have our display, which is being generated exactly in the, same, in the same, same way that the screen that you're looking at now to watch this video is generating your image. It's all little RGB subpixels. And uh, yeah, we've just duplicated that effect perfectly in uh, geometry nodes. Now for my final scene, I um, put a plane of glass over the front and gave it a little housing, but basically inside is exactly what we just created. Um, I think I use little cubes for the pixels instead of planes, but yeah, you get you uh, you get the idea. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, please remember to hit like and subscribe. And a big thanks to the Blender Guru himself for um, giving this video a mention. Uh, quite possibly that's that's how you're here in the first place. But for now, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.